this is another one of those lists where I started making it and it didn't seem that long and then I got to the end and there's bloody loads of them. <laughs> Come on in, my name is Aoife and today I am going to take you through some of the book series that are still sitting on my TBR. Either it's one that I haven't started at all, or I have read some of the books on the series but I haven't finished it out. There are kind of an equal balance between those and some of them are genuinely books that I have been bringing with me from when I was like 12, 13 or so and started to get really genuinely into reading. First series on the list is The Babysitter's Club by Anne M. Martin. I go back to this one time and time again. It's the series that I go back to the most when I'm in a reading slump, when I need something that's going to take me back out of it because they're so quick. I think they're generally around 150 to 250 pages long. And because there's such a huge and vibrant cast of characters, there's always going to be something totally different happening in every single book. But I know the cast of characters so well. It's almost like I am a member of the Babysitter's Club myself. It's almost like I live in Stony Brook myself and I've seen the girls around town. The Babysitter's Club follows seven young girls. Two of them are 11 and the rest are 13. And they have a babysitting service set up in their town of Stony Brook in Connecticut where they basically take care of all of the kids in the area and form kind of like after school clubs or summer camps or kind of share babysitting jobs with each other. I love these books because they deal with so many topics that you wouldn't really expect to see in children's literature because you might think that they're a little bit too hard hitting. For example, quite a lot of them are children of divorce. There is bereavement in quite a few of the books. There are issues with racism. Uh, one of the characters is type one diabetic. And I feel like reading these books as a child kind of brings you into the fray of what these are about. As I had first read them, I hadn't suffered a bereavement yet, but having seen Claudia go through that kind of made me a little bit more able to deal with it when my first bereavement did come around. The next series on the list also comes from when I was a teenager and it is the Georgia Nicholson series. You might know this very well as the Angus Tongs and Full Front and Sogging series. I know that Emma from Drinking By Myself read the entire series in 24 hours. That is not something that I have done yet because I haven't actually finished the entire series. I think I've gotten up to about book five. I do remember that her dad left at the end of one of the books to start a job elsewhere. And I don't remember how far into the series that is, but I think that is the last thing I remember reading about Georgia's life. I loved her so much though when I was younger and I would absolutely love to go back, maybe start the whole series again and just relive my life through Georgia. I'd also love to see what Georgia is like as an adult, as somebody my age who's approaching their 30s, I'd love to see what Georgia is doing. What kind of a job does she have? Who is she seeing? Is she married? Does she have kids? Does she have her own cat? I would love to see what Georgia is doing, but unfortunately we lost Louise Renison to cancer in 2016. Next on the list is the Walsh Sister series by Marion Keys. I've spoken time and time and time again about how much I love Marion's books. And Watermelon, her debut, was actually the first book of hers that I had ever read. So that one follows Claire, who's the eldest of the Walsh sisters, and is coming back to Dublin after the birth of her child when her husband walks out on them. The second book in the series is Rachel's Holiday, which is actually my favourite Marion book so far. And it follows Claire's younger sister, Rachel, who is living the high life in New York and is having drug fueled parties, alcohol fueled parties, and isn't really acknowledging that this is an issue in her life. But her parents bring her back from New York to a rehabilitation centre in Wicklow where she kind of comes to terms with the high life that she's been living and maybe this isn't the life that she wants to lead anymore. I have got the third book in the series which is Angels and I think that that follows Maggie who is the middle of the sisters and she is also living in New York but her marriage is about to fall apart. The other two sisters Helen and Anna also have their own two books and Anna and Helen were kind of my favourite of the sisters. I think Anna was probably my favourite because we were the closest in age as I had read Watermelon. I think Anna was 18 or so and I was maybe early 20s. And Anna felt very vibrant and very exciting to read about. So I am really excited to get to her book. I am so excited to finish off this series. And I also know that there's a kind of short story collection in that one 
called The A to Z of Life by Mammy Walsh. I've got a copy of Anyone Out There, which I think is Helen's book on request from my local library. And hopefully that one is going to free up very soon. So that might actually spur me on to finish up the series. The next series on the list is The Summer I Turn Pretty by Jenny Han. So I have read the first book. I read that in February of this year because it came out of my physical TV or pick. I didn't love it, but I also didn't hate it. And I did decide that I wanted to finish on with the series because I wanted to see how their lives continue. There were quite a lot of big revelations in the book and there was stuff that I just wanted to find out what was the finishing story in there. It's also got a kind of a summer love, first love vibe to it that is something that I really enjoy reading about YA fiction and I'd love to see how that's taken on in the second book because I feel like there's a bit of a love triangle situation coming on in the second book. I don't know the order of the next two books off the top of my head but I know that one is called We'll Always Have Summer and the second is It's Not Summer Without You. I think It's Not Summer Without You comes first and then we'll always have summer, but I am really excited to see how the two of them play out. The next series that I want to read is Helen Huang's The Kiss Quotient. And this is the second book in the series, The Bride Test. I have already read uh, The Kiss Quotient last February or so. And I think that was the first steamy romance book where I kind of thought this might be the thing for me. I am going to go and find more of these. So I instantly went out and bought The Bride Test and then never read it because what else would you expect from me? So this book follows Kai, who is Michael from the first book's cousin, and he is entering into kind of an arranged marriage with Esme, who is from Vietnam and coming over to the US. I am not so sure how I feel about an arranged marriage, but I feel like if it's done really well, it's something that I'm gonna really enjoy. So I'm going to see how I enjoyed this book. And I know that there is a third one coming out sometime this year. And I'm going to keep an eye out for that one too. Next one on the list is Well Met by Jen DeLuca. And I actually have a copy of the second book of this already, which is Well Played. So there is a little bit of pressure to actually enjoy this one. I think that this one is kind of going to be something for me to see if I enjoy another type of romance book. Because this one is a Renaissance Fair romance where the two characters take part in a renaissance fair, they dress up as part of it, they run some of the stalls, maybe they run some of the food carts. I'm not a huge historical romance reader. I don't think I've actually read any of them, but this might be a good introduction for me because it's a historical type of setting, but still in our contemporary world setting. That might be me just completely misreading the situation, but, it might also be a kind of a gentle slope into seeing how I like historical fiction. So if I enjoy the two of these, maybe I can go and branch out and see how I enjoy historical fiction. The next series on the list is the Modern Love series by Alicia Rye. I have really enjoyed watching Alicia's TikToks, which she posts on um, Twitter and on Instagram. So I have a feeling from her Twitter persona, she's somebody that I'm really going to enjoy their writing because I feel like if somebody is really funny and entertaining and engaging in real life, it's going to translate really well into the books that they've written. This series is kind of about finding love online and things that happen when you're online dating. And that's something that's really interesting to me because that's how my relationship started. So I have a feeling that going back to the whole origins of how I met my partner and reading about people who are in that same situation is something that I'm going to really enjoy about the series. There are two books so far, I think, in the series. I've got both of them on my Kindle. There is The Right Swipe and there is Girl Gone Viral. And I'm really excited to start both of them. Another book series that I have got on my Kindle to start is The Wedding Date series by Jasmine Guillory. This is another romance series. I think there are five of them so far and there is another one coming out at the end of this year. I'm not fully sure what any of them are about, but I know that they are kind of about a storyline that takes you from when the couple first meet to their wedding and then their lives together. And it takes you through their proposal and the engagement and planning the wedding. At least that's what I am assuming happens based on the titles of the books, which are The Wedding Party and The Proposal, The Engagement, um, Party for Two. And I think one of them is a royal romance where a character's mother goes over to the UK and meets a member of the royal household. But I do love a romance series, so I am hoping that I'm going to really enjoy this one too. 
Another series that I really want to continue is the When Dimple Met Rishi series by Sandy and Menon. This is the second book in the series, uh, something about Sweetie. It took me way too long to realize that the book titles are actually plays on like 80s and 90s rom-coms. The first one you've got is When Dimple Met Rishi, which is a play on When Harry Met Sally. Then you have got There's Something About Sweetie, which is a play on There's Something About Mary. And then you have also got 10 Things I Hate About Pinky, which is a play on 10 Things I Hate About You. I don't think that these are ones that you necessarily need to read as a series. I think they're more companion novels rather than a series, but they're still books that I would really like to get to. I am going to have to reread When Dump and Met Rishi though, because I haven't read it in about three or four years by now, and I'm kind of a little bit dodgy on the situation of what happens. I know that Dimple is a girl who wants to work in STEM and that she has developed an app that she's bringing to a summer camp in Caltech. And Rishi is a guy who is set up with her as an arranged marriage and their parents send them both to the same place so that they can meet up and kind of start their relationship from there. The next series that I want to start is a retelling series and it's the Once Upon a Con series by Ashley Poston. I only have this book so far, Geekerella, which is a retelling of Cinderella. And I know that there are other books in the series that are also retellings. I know that there is definitely one that's a retelling of Beauty and the Beast, which is my favorite fairy tale and one of my favorite Disney films. So I'm hoping if I really enjoy this one that I can get to the Beauty and the Beast one and then see where we go from there. The last series that I want to continue is the About a Girl series by Lindsay Kalk. I read the first book in the series in March and it took me a while to get into it. But once I did get into the story and once I started to really enjoy it, it became a series that I really wanted to continue. So I put the other two books onto my Amazon watch list. And when I get the chance to get around to them, I am so excited to see what happens to Tess after she has come back from Hawaii, having pretended to be her flatmate on an assignment as a photographer when nobody knows that she's not the real Vanessa. So there you have it. Those are some book series that I would either like to start or to continue reading. What book series are you after starting or is there anyone that you've got your eye on? Don't forget to like and subscribe because I have new videos up every week. Now, get on out of here. Oh, 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 oh,